So I wanted to come on and do a quick review of the Emotiva BaseX A100. And this is a smaller power amp that I ordered uh, over the Christmas holiday because I had a project. I wanted to repurpose my Wharfdale Diamond 10.1 speakers, which uh, I really liked, and I've actually reviewed them here on the channel. But uh, in the fall, I got my Magnapan MMGIs, also reviewed on the channel, and I couldn't bring myself to get rid of the Wharfdale speakers. They were really some of my favorite speakers that I've ever owned. So I started looking around uh, the internet, trying to see exactly how I could use them uh, with my computer. And I found uh, a couple of options with which I wasn't terribly satisfied, and you could see them here. So I thought about going the inexpensive route, and I was looking at these SMSL desktop amps, uh, about 140 these days. They were in the 80 to 90 range uh, you know, over the Christmas holiday. And they looked somewhat interesting. They had a lot of different inputs. They had Bluetooth. I thought it would be a kind of an inexpensive way to attach my speakers to the computer. Um, but I read some reviews, you know, apparently uh, they use uh, kind of cheap internal components. Uh, they don't perform all that well. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a product that, you know, does its job. It's not going to knock your socks off, but, you know, it's better than obviously just... Um, plugging in PC speakers to the back of your computer. So then I saw that Monoprice was selling a tube amp, and I thought, well, you know, these uh, Wharfdale speakers, they have a, a kind of mellow quality to them. They're, they're a laid-back speaker, and I thought that would lend, the, lend itself well. Those qualities would lend themselves well to a tube amp. But then I was reading that the Monoprice 50-watt tube amp is not really a true tube amp. It has kind of a normal power supply, and then... I guess a tube preamp section. Again, reviews were good for what it was, $200 today. It might have been about $140, $150 around the holidays. So uh, I was weighing that. And then I saw the NAD D3040, which is kind of a hybrid receiver slash desktop amp. Has a lot of connections, also has Bluetooth. Um, but as you can see, about $700, $700 um, to attach speakers uh, to my computer seemed like a little bit much. Plus, it had a touchscreen interface. It also didn't get glowing reviews, although it is extremely powerful. Um, and I think around Christmas, the previous model, the D3045, was sold for about $500. But it still seemed um, pretty pricey. So I figured I would just wait a little bit. Um, I didn't want to go to the super cheap end, like the Lapai, these little Amazon sells them, these little sort of desktop amps that are, you know, pretty powerful for their $30 price point, but apparently uh, break after a year. So I just, you know, said, well, um, I'll think about this project later. And as I did that, that's when I came across the Emotiva BaseX A100. And I was really surprised. This is a really unique, uh, high-quality product that certainly solved my problem. It's um, 50 watts, uh, you know, full-range measurement, 50 watts, 0.05% uh, distortion, which, you know, is a little high for, you know, audiophile, quote-unquote, grade products, but in practice, uh, you don't really hear it. Um, it's a pure power amp, only has one set of connections. I had to get a, a Y cable, and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you around the product in, in, in a little bit. But I was really surprised how good this combination sounded. I was coming from the Klipsch uh, desktop speaker setup with the subwoofer. They've been selling it you know, probably now for about 15 years. I think they have a Bluetooth version now, but you can go just you know Klipsch computer speakers, and it's, it's the only ones uh, that they sell. And that was pretty good, and I was always very satisfied. I couldn't really find anything better, but wow, the combination of uh, this amp and the Wharfdale speakers just make everything sound better uh, on the computer. Games sound great, uh, music sounds great, 
and uh, there's some real power. And, you know, I've been collecting audio gear long enough to know that, you know, sometimes you think you have a good receiver, and yet you get a pair of speakers, and the receiver struggles to power. The Morphdale speakers are six-ohm speakers. I've had them plugged into receivers that just, you know, worked, but it didn't give you that oomph. And, wow, this, you know, you turn this up just a little bit, and you can blast these speakers very, very clear. Um, but you don't need to do that, because with these speakers on the desk, and this much, you know, clear, crisp, clean power, it almost creates kind of like a near-field experience. So you can sit, and you can be enveloped uh, by the two-channel sound, and, you know, you really don't need to blow your ears out. The other, I guess, unique thing about this amp is that, um, you know, it, pa it can power really difficult-to-drive headphones. Now, it has a, I guess, a, is that a 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone plug, so you need a little adapter for most headphones. And I, I don't really have super high-quality headphones. I have a pair of RBH uh, HP2 headphones, um, which were never hard to drive anyway. They sound really good. They sound better connected to this. I have a pair of um, Ankios, which, um, you know, are pretty good. I think the Ankios and these RBH headphones are about 32 ohms. And then I have a pair of Kos that are maybe uh, 61, 62 ohms, which, again, not hard to drive, but a little bit harder. And, and those Kos sounded very good uh, attached to this amp. But apparently you can open the amp up and you can take these protection um, jumpers off. You can actually deliver the full power of the amp through the headphone port if you have some you know, crazily uh, high impedance headphones. It's not something that I would use, but it's nice to know uh, that the option is there. So I'm going to take a look around the product and I'll come back and I'll, I'll kind of give you my final thoughts. So this is it. This is the Emotiva Basex A100 and I have it connected to a uh, the Creative Sound Blaster uh, XG5 card which I reviewed separately on the channel and these are my Wharfdale Diamond 10.1 speakers and again I said the idea was that I wanted to repurpose these speakers. And you can see the, the unit, um, very long, very deep. It has this nice kind of uh, blue backlit uh, volume button, and all the connections are on the back. And it's about 12 pounds, so I'm not going to lift it up. But I just wanted to give you uh, the idea of what it looks like here. And, you know, I have a fairly large desk, so I can you know, have these speakers, I can have the unit on there, but, you know, you're going to need some real estate for it. Um, nonetheless, it's a clean unit. Uh, as I said, it sounds absolutely wonderful. And I don't know if you can see this in here, you have that sort of big transformer. Uh, it doesn't get too hot. Uh, there is a fan, and then, of course, you know, behind I've got these uh, sort of gangle of wires, and I've got the computer connected to the G5. I've got the G5 running through a Y splitter cable, 1.8 millimeter to composite. And those are really the only connections that you can have. So it's a simple setup. It's it's a sort of a classic um, class AB power amp, but with a little bit of wiring to the computer, uh, it really makes for a nice setup. All right, so final thoughts. Uh, the pros, uh, this amp is powerful for its price. Compare it to the NAD amp, which is 60 watts, albeit with Bluetooth and more connections. You know, that's 60 for 700. This is 50 for 229, so it's a very good deal. It has that clean, crisp, dynamic Class AB sound, and I would really encourage you, if you haven't used a Class AB power amp. Um, it just, it sounds deeper, it sounds more dynamic, um, it just sounds better than what you get in a home theater out of a box or even a five, six hundred dollar receiver. Um, headphone performance is good based on the headphones that I have and again, uh, you know, it has that potential to drive, difficult to drive headphones if that's something you are looking to do. Um, I think it sounds amazingly better 
than just the sound card PC speaker combinations. And if you place your speakers properly, you can get like a near field audio experience. In other words, you can get all the dynamics, all the great sound, you know, up close, and you don't have to play it that loud to experience that. Um, obviously, it's the reason I got it. It's it's great for repurposing quality speakers that aren't in use, and you know, it has some potential for some other creative projects. And one thing you could do instead of a sound bar, you know, you have some some speakers lying around. You buy this for maybe the same price as a sound bar, a little bit cheaper. Um, and I'm sure this delivers better sound than something you could get at Costco. Another thing you could do, as far as gaming goes, you could get like a splitter box and you could run uh, all your old school systems into the box, connect this up for audio, and get awesome two-channel st uh, stereo sound for things like you know, Dreamcast and Saturn and things like that. So um, really flexible. Uh, really flexible piece of hardware, which is, I, I like that in an audio product. All right, now for the cons. Uh, the unit is large and it is long, and it might not fit in certain setups. You need a big desk, lots of space, especially for the unit and the speakers. Um, it is an issue, and you may really have to think about an alternative placement. Uh, there is no power button on the front of the unit. There's like a little switch on the back so it makes it kind of hard to get to. It does have a standby mode but it's a rather short standby mode so if you have it connected to a computer it's going to shut on and off a lot and it's going to be a delay you know let's say you're working working I don't know on a spreadsheet and then close that out play a YouTube video it's gonna take a while to kick on and I'm sure that on and off is probably not good for it so uh, I just leave it on, but you're going to have to reach around to turn it off. There's no remote. Um, it is a pure power amp. Uh, there's only, again, the two, uh, you know, uh, red-white RCA composite inputs. Um, really only a one-device solution, unless you're using uh, some kind of uh, splitter or other kind of uh, connector. Can't connect a subwoofer to it, which is an issue, at least you can't connect it easy, easily. I do know that there are ways and you, know, you could run the speakers into the sub and adjust the crossover on the sub and stuff like that, but out of the box you can't connect a sub, so you want to have speakers that have a decent low range. And I think the other con here is it may not be a good value with lower end speakers or as a combo purchase with good speakers. So you know if you're gonna spend $300 on the speakers and $229 on this, that's a decent amount of money. Um, and, you know, I have some old speakers lying around, you know, Sony $100 bookshelf speakers that are 12 years old. I, I wouldn't necessarily buy this for those type of speakers. But if you, if you have a good audiophile type speaker um, lying around, I think it's great for repurposing those. Or, you know, if you go onto Craigslist and you get a decent speaker for 50 60 bucks, I think then it becomes an option. But I wouldn't, you know... I wouldn't waste uh, the power and waste the money if you don't have the speakers to work with it. And for the final verdict, I really think this is an excellent alternative to PC speakers at a very reasonable price. Again, I like the quality of, of the unit, the flexibility, and it seems to do everything you might need as far as good quality audio in a small room setup is concerned. The sound quality is an immediate and noticeable improvement over a lot of the products that I've heard in the PC audio uh, market segments. Um, but again, its usefulness is dependent upon the availability of good quality speakers. But if you have those good quality speakers and they're sitting in a closet and you, you're just trying to figure out something to do with them, this is, I think, the way to go. I mean, since I've hooked these up, gaming and music on the PC has become much more enjoyable. You know, anything from, you know, the latest uh, Steam games, indie games, you know, running uh, emulators, doing the old school games, it just makes everything sound better. And I'll give you a perfect example. Sonic Mania, great classic soundtrack. Pumping through these speakers is really um, amazing. And so this is a product that has made my PC gaming better in a way I didn't really think was possible. And that's what I like. I like, you know, reasonably pr priced audio gear 
that makes gaming better. And uh, this amp does that. This amp and, and speaker combo does that. Um, and certainly uh, could be put to use in a lot of different creative ways depending on your scenario. So uh, it is a strong recommendation. It is a fun product. And uh, can't wait to get back and uh, play some more Steam games with this amp uh, working and delivering that clean and crisp sound.